Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Taking a live look outside right now at Ball Arena. This place was on fire last night. Man, that was an incredible game. We're going to get more into the Nuggets Lakers game two coming up in just a moment. For now, good morning, everyone. Corey Rose here with Jordan Chavez, Erica Lopez, and Chris Bianchi. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Our director, Arthur, was at that game last night. Stayed till the very wow. end. Wow. game. As you can imagine, a little bit tired this morning. He <laughs> said, thank goodness Chris Bianchi's ordered up some napping weather for him. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have some pretty good <laughs> napping weather this afternoon for uh, good old Art back there. I feel, wow, that is that is a dedication. Yeah. That is commitment because that game ended, what, six and a half hours ago? Like 1030. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, uh, Art. We are we are thinking of you this morning. But in the meantime, <laughs> uh, for today, uh, as you mentioned there, Jordan, we are going to be talking about some very good napping weather for this afternoon. More clouds and sunshine. Now, this is not to be clear. Last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, when we were stuck in the 30s and 40s for such a long period, what well, we are likely looking at temperatures in the low 60s, some clouds, and a few afternoon showers, and maybe a rumble of thunder or two. Not really that big of a deal, but again, you will have some of those showers around. And then for Thursday. Thursday, Friday, and especially Saturday. It looks really unsettled for the end of the week and oh, end of the week and to the start of the weekend. Temperatures right now, we had a weak cold front drop on through. That means we're in the 40s for the most part in northeast Colorado. We'll get up to the low 60s for today. Showers and storms, mainly after about 2, 3 o'clock or so. Probably a little earlier in the foothills, a little later in the Denver area and the eastern plains. Highs today, 60s, 70s eastern plains, right around our seasonal average of 63 for us in Denver for today. Right now, a few rain and snow showers for us in the high country. Not uh, m much of that reaching the ground at this point, but we'll probably see some rain showers for us this afternoon. And again, a rumble of thunder moving its way into the picture for the evening. Now, end of the week, that's more substantial. First, organized to be weather throughout the season for Thursday, and then Saturday looks like a washout. Uh, so that I'll have more details on that coming up in my full forecast. So, uh, Erica, I'm sure you're probably a big, bigger fan of that Wednesday, Thursday forecast rather than the uh, whole Saturday washout thing, right? Yeah, you know, it's always nice to have something nice to look forward to before the weather's not so great again, Chris. Thank you. Right now, we do want to check in on the commute for you at 5.03 on your Tuesday, 270 and best because this hour moving along nicely north of the Metro I-25 in Mead. No problems to report. Still pretty dark out there in light volume. Same story goes for 225 in Alameda as you get ready to travel in the area of Highway 36 and Wadsworth. Not even seeing any cars out there right now. Let's go ahead and bring you over to the graphics right now. Lots and lots of green out here, so wouldn't say there's a rush out the door really anywhere as far as our main interstates go. Denver to Boulder Drive 18 minutes on westbound Highway 36. Travel into Commerce City looking great. You're looking at an 11 minute ride in on westbound 76 from E470. Erica, thank you. Happening today, the man who posted this viral video is set to be sentenced. Rendon Dietzman recorded himself speeding between Colorado Springs and Denver in 20 minutes. Dietzman was arrested in Texas. He's being charged with seven counts, including menacing and reckless endangerment. The sentencing is expected to start at 830 this morning. Also today, one of the former owners of the Return to Nature funeral home in Penrose will be in court. Carrie Halford has a bond hearing on the federal charges against her. She and her husband, John, pleaded not guilty to pocketing nearly $900,000 in pandemic relief funds from the federal government. These charges are separate from the state charges that the couple faces for allegedly storing 190 bodies improperly in their funeral home in Penrose. They have not entered a plea on those charges yet. Right now, Carrie Halford is the only one up for bail in the federal case. The hearing is expected to start at 11 o'clock this afternoon. In New York today, we will enter day two of testimony in the criminal trial against former President Donald Trump. During the first day, the prosecution delivered opening statements first, followed by the defense. The first witness, David Pecker, was called. Pecker is Trump's longtime friend and former chief executive of the National Enquirer's parent company. The judge also ruled prosecutors can ask Trump some questions about past legal issues if he testifies. Court is set to resume around 9 o'clock this morning, New York time. Tomorrow marks one year since since someone killed two employees at the American Elm restaurant in the Highlands. We still don't know who the shooter was. At first, Denver police thought it was a robbery, but investigators haven't been able to confirm that. Employees Emeril Von Daler and Ignacio Gutierrez Morales were found shot and killed inside on April 24th last year. Police have still not made any arrests. Emeril's sister Danica says that's what keeps her up at night. I know the police are working day in and day out on it. I talk to them every week. You know, I know I know they're working hard, but it's just we want justice for both of them. 
Bullard says that she talks to Ignacio's son-in-law regularly and doesn't want his family to be forgotten either. The reward in this case is up to $32,600. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 720-913-STOP. Right now, a live look at Denver. And new this morning, the city says it counted another 40 migrant arrivals on Monday. Right now, 33 people are in the city's short-term shelter. Another 691 are in the city's hotel shelter. The city surpassed the 41,000 mark last week for total number of migrants helped. Right now, that number is more than 41,100. With the influx of migrant families moving to Denver, schools are seeing new students and not just kids. Now, news reporter Brianna Fernandez is live in Denver. And Brianna, Denver Public schools is seeing interest from adults. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the number of adults wanting to learn English is growing. That's according to DPS. They say right now they have more than 650 adults enrolled wanting to learn English, and they say that they want to succeed here in the U.S. And with that comes learning a whole new language. So over at the Denver Public Schools Central Community Hub, where the ESL classes are held, we spoke to a group of people who are learning as a family, three generations, all enrolled in ESL classes. The Contreras family moved from Venezuela two years ago for a better life. ESL teacher Michael says that his students always come eager to learn and what they're learning in ESL classes will give families like the Contreras family the skills they need for work, school or to even interact uh, every day with others. The majority of our students are DPS parents. So a lot of them, you know, their student, their, you know, their kids are speaking English and they're trying to understand what their kids are saying with their friends or, um, you know, they're trying to follow along in their kids homework. They're really eager to, you know, engage and learn English as much as they can. So DPS offers four levels of ESL classes, and this is available for uh, adults who live here in Denver or parents of DPS students. And the good news is that it's free as well. For now, I'm live in Denver. Brianna Fernandez for 9 News. Brianna, thanks for the update. A missed email almost cost Jefferson County more than half a million dollars. They found it and now thousands of taxpayers are being told to find that money. This error started when someone in the budget and finance department missed an email. That missed message meant four special districts weren't listed on thousands of property tax bills. Those water and sanitation districts were missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax money because of this error. We started hearing from the special districts who weren't receiving any money on their property tax collections and uh, distributions. So we looked into it and we found that four of them were missing. Now around 6,500 households are getting an apology letter in the mail asking for more money. The treasurer says the average has been about $100 per property tax bill. The county says it's now creating an online system for the special districts to submit mill levies to the county. Until then, they are saying if you don't get a response that they received your email, make sure that you follow up. As state and federal officials try to block a merger between Kroger and Albertsons, the grocery stores have a new plan. If the merger goes through, they would sell nearly all of our state's Albertsons stores. The companies say they will sell nearly 600 stores across the country to CNS wholesale grocers, including 91 Safeways in Colorado. Under the deal, Kroger and Albertsons would license the Safeway name to CNC in Colorado and Arizona. Colorado and the FTC sued to block the nearly $25 billion merger, saying it would hurt shoppers already facing rising food costs. The companies hope the new deal will pacify regulators so they'll allow the merger to go through. The city of Baltimore is suing the owner and manager of the ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge last month and killed six people. The Dolly is owned by Grace Ocean Private Limited and managed by Synergy Marine PTE LTD. It accuses both companies of providing the vessel with an incompetent crew that lacked proper skill and training. The claim says that the Dolly left the port despite indications that the ship had an inconsistent power supply. The city is seeking unspecified damages from both companies. TikTok is claiming to challenge a potential U.S. ban of its app. On Saturday, the House passed a foreign aid package that calls for TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance, to sell it within nine months or risk being banned nationwide. In an internal memo to employees, the company says it's planning to file a court challenge if the bill is signed into law. TikTok has publicly opposed the bill, saying it infringes on its users' First Amendment rights. Supporters argue the law is necessary to protect American security and personal data.